Ladies and gentlemen, you know, over time, you've had most of the analysts saying that one of the key constants in politics is the political interest. And actually, you can't doubt that because political interest is one of the factors that shape how the political game is played by the politicians. You know, two politicians cannot come and work together minus their interests converging and being unified to form the basis of what they want to champion for politically. And so when a, one politician has their interest, they must ensure that the interest they have will be aligned or will actually converge with the interest of the other politician that they are going to work with. You know, Raphael Tuju has come out to say to the nation publicly how William Ruto was used to spearhead President Uru, uh, Kenyatta's agenda and actually to support President Uru Kenyatta. Tell me something, this payment was in return for what? Well, they would clothe it in various ways, like I, I need that money so that I can go and com convince my community or I can convince my constituency. But it was colossal amounts of money. It was like the upfront payment. Then the, the final payment is through grabbing certain ministries, making sure that finance, making sure that agriculture, making sure that infrastructure. If he didn't have the minister, he had the permanent secretaries. And then he went on a looting spree. You know, as things become clearer, you know, very many revelations are coming out. And I remember in 2017, when IBC declared President Uru Kenyatta as the winner of the election, the presidential election, you know, Citizen TV posted an update. And there's this one user who commented that the Kalenjins were happy by 2017, thinking that Ruto will be automatically supported by the Kikuyus, especially President Kenyatta in 2022. And then this user, this, this comment has now gone viral and everybody is revisiting it. And people can, can, can actually try to see the sense that this user foreshadowed, you know, and most of the people have tried to term the user as a prophet, kind of. And so this user was saying, you know, 2022 will be totally different because whatever was being put in 2017 would not be attained or achieved by a specific category of people, the people who are supporting William Ruto and galvanized everything they had by that time to support President Ruto Kenyatta. And you see, now that things have changed, and as clear as we can see, you know, we are getting a lot of revelations. And these revelations are meant to achieve certain political milestones or the objectives. For instance, when you talk of Rafael Tuju, you know, President Kenyatta is somebody who is scheming the manner in which he's supposed to attack William Ruto. And if you've been keenly following how President Kenyatta has been giving William Ruto dose <laughs> of his medicine in pieces, you know, you remember the first time when President Kenyatta used the same same Rafael Tuju to reveal to the nation a bit of what happened between him and Ruto. Remember, Tuju went public and told the nation that you know, it is confirmed and they have evidence that William Ruto wanted to collaborate with Raila Odinga and impeach President Uru Kenyatta. You know, it was, it, it trended and everybody was dismayed actually, everybody was surprised, everybody was taken aback. You know, after the Sagana 3, one of the things which came out clearly was that, you know, President Kenyatta was, was not plainly telling people the exact thing which happened, but he was kind of giving people the preamble, the introduction 
or, or just giving the overview of what happened. And so, you know, people like Tuju, who are very close to President Kenyatta, and as a matter of fact, you know, if you look at the confidence within the circle of President Kenyatta, you know, you cannot forget to mention Rafael Tuju. And that is why President Kenyatta has been so, so serious with him and taking him to the next level that he is going to be politically. We are now seeing another revelation which everybody is now being taken aback that William Ruto was paid to support President Uru Kenyatta. And that is what is bringing the aspect of interest. You know, politics is about interest. You go with the package that you have as the interest driving your political agenda and motive. And so what would we read out of this? You know, there are very many implications or there are very many uh, objectives that are supposed to be met by this revelation. And like we always say, which of course is a very common phrase, that in politics nothing happens out of a mere coincidence. You know, this is not just something which is being revealed to the nation. Out of blues, you know, they are setting up a pace to meet an objective. And so in this analysis, I want us to take some few minutes and look at why is it that every revelation that is coming on board and taking people aback is always being revealed by Tuju in the first place. And then there are revelations that are so deep to the extent that you will not try to doubt them the moment you hear them. In fact, you will try to dig deeper into them. You know, it's, it's kind of taking people into uh, that kind of discussion, you know, trying to make people's minds become engaged in trying to decipher what really happened. So this is what I think. You know, we are in the home stretch of these campaigns. And actually, you know, President Kenyatta has not been having critical times to go into the campaigns. And one of the things which actually is, is coming out is that, you know, there's probability that Raila advised President Kenyatta not to actually go and campaign for him because that would have confirmed and reaffirmed the insinuation or the assertion that Raila is President Uru Kenyatta's project, you know, Raila is a man who would want to have his autonomy even in the campaigns and so probably he might have told President Kenyatta that you just stay behind but do it on a very strategic manner that you can devise. And so that is what President Kenyatta uh, uh, took heed and, 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 and actually devised his own method of campaigning for Raila. And so the first one is to give William Ruto a dose on a beat by beat basis. You know, the moment you see President Kenyatta walking into an event and then actually getting the platform where the majority of Kenyans will be focusing on him, he leverages on that opportunity and he attacks the deputy president on a small dose. But this small dose is very much effective. Unasema nyinyi ni maskini, nyinyi tunajenga tumejenga hii radio inakuja. Unaenda Mombasa unaambia wale na usemi ni nani? Wale wale walichukua bandari, wakapeleka huko Naivasha na mimi niki utaona nimeirudisha Mombasa. Akija hapa na kuambia eh mori aga eh itaka hapa eh tuna Sasa sijui kama mnanisikia wenzangu. Tuwe watu ambao watakuwa wa haki. Wenzangu, ombi langu nikiwasema nikisema kwa heri kwenu. Mimi nataka jameni tuendelee kuwa kitu kimoja. Mimi nataka tuwe na uongozi ambao utakuwa wa haki. Mimi na wauliza kwa heshi makubwa sana. Na sio kulazimisha kwa sababu hakuna kura ya kulazimisha. Shikeni huyu mzee mkono jameni. namna hiyo nakuru tumekubaliana tutamshika mkono wacha nione kwa mikono kwa mikono kwa mikono ni wangapi ni wangapi wanaamini ya kwamba tutamshika you know if you look at the revolution that has really come out right now by uh, Rafael Tujo you know it is coming to counter 
whatever Ruto said in the presidential debate. Because, you know, William Ruto mentioned some of the things which are very secretive and at the same time was kind of going overboard to tell the nation exactly what happened, although he was not hitting the nail on the head, but was trying to give people exactly what could have happened and why President Kenyatta sidelined him and how President Kenyatta has been a kind of trying to punish him as an individual, as a deputy president, and even when you go to a larger extent, punish the entire a support base of William Ruto. And so when the debate had been completed, you know, we are expecting that, you know, there is a lot of discussion. There is a, a wider uh, array of discussion that is going on for people to start thinking of uh, William Ruto as somebody who was uh, being uh, demeaned in the government that he perfectly well facilitated to be formed and help President Uru Kenyatta to achieve his, 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 his presidency quest. So, you know, the messaging that William Ruto was supposed to get out of from the debate was a message which was to go and actually drive a given perception into the people on how President Kenyatta has been punishing him for the last time that they have been together and actually for the time that he has been the deputy president. When they say that Ruto was paid heftily to support President Kenyatta, they are trying to uh, bring out somebody who did not support President Kenyatta willingly. And you know, based on the conditions that were met, you know, you give me uh, an incentive or give me the benefits of supporting you between 2013 to 2022. And then, you know, I also have my ambitions. I also have my interests that I, I am supposed to meet. Then after that, you know, you pay me for this time. And after uh, getting paid and I give you uh, uh, the support that you want, when we get into 2022, it's like the contract we had with you and, 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 and the offer that you made to me, the consideration, which is the payment, shall end by 2022. And so after 2022, we are like, uh, actually, we have concluded uh, the scope or the purpose of the contract. So I take on after that. And so when they say William Samaruto was paid, it is supposed to send a perception that Ruto did not support President Kenyatta willingly. This dose is being served in bits to William Ruto. And most of the times, if you've seen President Kenyatta trying to uh, reach out to the masses, you know, he becomes very tactful. Like, you remember, he was telling the people, the person he supports, you know, is somebody we're supposed to be relied upon as opposed to a young man who is full of lies. And I like the manner in which one of the translations by uh, the Ramog Radio FM put it very clearly. If you are a Lou, you can get the exact context and, and you can just feel the authenticity and veritability that it comes with, you know. So President Kenyatta is very strategic in how he is supporting Raila Odinga and that is what we can conclude on. You know, the strategy he is using to support Raila Odinga is so full of wit to the extent that if he manages to emotionally get attached to the people of Mount Kenya, then I will tell you for free that this is the time we will see what we did not expect to see in Mount Kenya as having turned out to vote for Raila Odinga at the expense of William Samoy Ruto. And we are only remaining with 12 days. And these 12 days, you know, a day in politics is like a thousand days, okay? Just like what is being said in the Bible. For God, one day is like a thousand days, and a thousand days is like one day. So for this, 12 days can change a lot. And this narrative can uh, start to be taken into the people of Mount Kenya and leaders who are backing the Azimio team would use this narrative to tell people that, that you know, this man did not just come to support our own on a willing basis, but he was compromised in the first place. So that also reveals another nature of William Ruto that, you know, whatever he does is questionable. It is also confirming that President Kenyatta is 
not supposed to automatically support William Ruto because if he paid Ruto to support him, then it was a deal which was made. And this deal was to run until President Kenyatta finishes his two terms. And so, in other words, President Kenyatta has no debt that is supposed to pay William Ruto. And so is the Mount Kenya people, you know. The Mount Kenya people are not having any debt to be paid to Ruto because Ruto did not support President Kenyatta willingly. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have another conversation next time. Thank you.